I'm a member of the North Texas Battle Group. What we do is we build scale model battleships, we arm them with CO2 cannons, then we take them out on the pond and we shoot each other, sink each other. It's an enjoyable hobby that allows us to, it's, it's not simulated combat, it's actually real combat. So we have an opportunity to engage each other in a role that the ships on the seas actually played. It's a historical hobby, and it's also a very enjoyable hobby. Uh, battle bots on the water is very close to what we do, but it's in a package that most people can instantly understand and engage themselves in. The idea of ships shooting each other is very visceral, very simple, and it's an awful lot of fun. I thought the had a hole in it. We started off the sortie with Don and I in a position right next to each other. We backed up and we jockeyed for position and uh, Don took a really good shot. And what happened was is it hit an accumulator inside the hull. The accumulator basically burst and the rupture with the gas just basically pushed out all of this balsa that you see that's missing here. There was uh, all the pieces of the, the accumulator are inside. It's just simply a, the gas vented out through the side of the ship. Don got an incredibly good shot, and it teaches you to always have blast shielding in your ship when you need to. <clears throat> I have to admit it was a very lucky shot. <laughs> but I was glad to show your boat what the bottom of the lake looks like. <laughs> My name is Jerry Etheridge, and this is uh, the DKM Lutzov. It's a German pocket battleship. And as you can see on this first uh, sortie here, I've got taken several hits. And these, this later on will be scored. Each hit above this black line is 10 points. Each one on the line is 25 points and each hole below the line is 50 points. Today, what we'll end up doing is let's have our three battleships go after their main battleships and distract them while you go in and strafe the, the convoys. And we'll try to get the big boys away from you. You're running the convoy. What you do is you've got enough displacement. You're on your own for the most part. Holler if you need help. And 
you okay. try to mine the Nelson. He's okay. our first target, and then we'll sink the guy that traveled down Just here from Indiana. Stay at least three feet away from my boat. We will do that. We'll, we'll keep, we'll keep and, wide berth. But we have to sink Jason. He traveled down from Indiana okay. to get sunk. That's, That's right. what we're going to do to him. We'll send him back wet. <laughs> That's all there is to it. Chicago goes down. <laughs> no doubt. For temporary repairs, you know, spreading the dope on relatively liberally to displace the water before putting the uh, silk span on so that it gets good adhesion. These are the items that differentiate our ships from many others. These guns actually fire ball bearings. You can see through the top of these magazines how many ball bearings these particular guns can carry. These guns are 732nd ball bearings. There are multiple calibers for different size ships. These servos elevate the guns so they can go up and down. We can change the range that we're actually firing at. The guns actually uh, traverse left and right also and it allows us to go ahead and engage different ships in different bearings on a single pass. The, the CO2 is supplied via a simple system from a paintball bottle. Paintball bottle has a simple on and off valve. It goes down to a regulator that reduces the pressure to something that we, we have a hobby specified maximum pressure and the regulator is that. The electrical system is supplied by two 12 amp hour batteries. This runs a six volt system. Some people run 12. Basically, it supplies all the electrical to the entire ship, including the radio, all the servos, and the bilge pump. The bilge pump itself is probably the single most important item on the ship. This actually pumps water out of the ship to the pump outlet, up this hose and out the pump outlet. And what that allows us to do is it allows us to perform a certain amount of damage control. As water comes into the ship, all it takes is one hole to sink it if you don't have a pump that's actually working. When the ship takes on too much water for the bilge pump to evacuate, it actually sinks. And when the ship sinks, this particular, on my ship, this particular item floats up to the surface. It's a recovery float. It floats up, looks like a little gravestone in the water. We, get hold, we grasp hold of the line, we pull the ship to the surface, or we can follow the line down to the ship if the ship is too heavy to pull up via the line. Unfortunately, today I was the only one not sunk, so that meant, uh, I guess you call it a winner. This uh, boat took a lot of damage today. It's thoroughly soaked, but it'll get repaired, and we'll come back and have another good battle next month. Here's some, uh, some of the damage. I covered some of it up with tape. You can see large gashes from uh, Mike Duffy's boat. <laughs> These are just temporary patches. I'll take that home. Uh, tonight and this month I'll, I'll patch up the balsa with, with new wood and paint. Uh, inside you can see it's full of water. The bilge pump was getting most of it out but it's still a lot in there. So I'll take this all out. All the guns will come out, get dried out, batteries charged and uh, get it all set up again for next month. Uh, yes, it was a great day for battling. We had a fun, exciting day with a whole lot of carnage. Uh, Almost every ship was sunk at least once, some as many as three times. And the weather cooperated for a February day. We were just fantastic day. <laughs> <laughs>
Well, you can see that they all had a great time. And most importantly, they paid a lot of attention to safety precautions. And that's so important because as fun as this can be, the fun stops in a hurry when someone gets hurt. So it's a good thing that the glasses are required for both the boat captains and guests, like our cameramen. So if you look into this kind of RC activity, make sure you're following suit and abide by the safety rules like these guys. In all the battles they've staged so far, the club has yet to have any accidents. Don't forget to log on to Inside RC's website for upcoming show information and links to your nearest hobby shops. Your local hobby shop can give you the information and tools you need to get started in RC battleships or any other kind of radio control hobby. Thanks for joining us today.